Hi, it's Seta here. Welcome to another tutorial about Unity Water System. This time we will cover the foam tab and how to use the deformers and excluders. So let's get started. Before we go to the foam tab, we need to make sure that we have the foam options checked in the water stickers tab. Otherwise, the foam won't show up. We will discuss this tab in details in a moment, but now let's move on to the foam tab. The first option is persistence multiplier, which determines how long the foam stay in the water surface before disappearing. To help you understand this better, I have here a simple water decal that generates foam. If I set the value to zero, we have less foam, but also when the object is moved, that foam disappears faster. If we increase this value, visually we will have more foam because the foam generated area stay longer. And after moving the object, the foam will disappear much slower than in the case of a small value. Here we have the current influence, which is responsible for whether our foam should move with the direction of the water or be more static. The higher the value, the faster the foam movement animation. Next option is color, where, as you can guess, we can set the color of the foam. It is also worth mentioning that the darker the color, the more transparent the foam becomes. Below, we have the smoothness option, which is responsible for whether the foam should reflect light rays, meaning whether it should be shinier or more matte. If we set texture tilting to zero, it will turn out that our foam is a few shifting spots on the water. But using texture tilting, we can add a special texture to the place where their spot appears, which will give them a more distinct shape. With texture tilting, we also control how often this texture repeats on the surface of the water. Next, we have the simulation foam amount parameter, which allows us to control the amount of foam generated on our water. If we set it to zero, then no foam will be generated. However, if we choose any other value, then additional options will appear below. One of them is the mask field, where we can add a specially prepared texture that will allow us to define exactly where on the water surface the foam can appear. To prepare such a texture, we need to open any graphic program like Photoshop or Krita, then create a new file and go to the red channel. The black color completely suppresses the foam effect in the given area, while the lighter color, the more foam will be generated in that place. Next, let's save our texture as a PNG and add it to Unity. Let's click on the texture and in wrap mode set it to clamp, then hit apply. Now when we add the texture to the mask field and go to misc debug mode and choose foam, we will get a preview of this texture on our water. Of course using extent and offset we can control its size and position. The next settings is wind speed dimmer where we can use the curve to control how much foam should be generated at a specific wind speed. The x-axis corresponds to wind speed, which we set in distance wind speed. The further a point is on our x-axis, the stronger wind we need to activate it. The y-axis, on the other hand, controls the amount of foam that should be generated. So let's say that we want the foam to be generated at low wind speed with a full strength and decrease as wind increase. So on our curve we need to raise the y-axis value, meaning foam intensity, right at the start of the x-axis, meaning when the wind is the lowest. Now when we move distant wind speed to the lower values, we will see that the foam appears, but as we start increasing the wind strength, the foam begins to disappear. This is a pretty unrealistic example, but I hope that you now understand how this curve works. At this point it is also worth mention that our foam consists of two layers. Surface foam and deep foam. Surface foam is the foam that appears on the surface of the water as a result of waves and they contains the color that we set in the color section. 
We can preview it if we go to the MISC tab and set debug mode, foam and choose water foam mode. The second layer is a deep foam which is generated under the surface of water as bright fragments of it. Now we will return to the water decals tab. In this tab we can specify which of the special decals should be taken into account in our water system. Water decals are not classic decals as we know them, but rather a special material applied locally that modifies the standard properties of water in the place where it's located. The first option we can set is region size, which determines how far from the selected point those decals will be visible. We define this point in the region anchor and it can be any game object or the center of our water system. If we don't specify any point, then by default this region will follow our main camera. Below we can check whether we want to use the formers on our water and what their resolution should be. Next we specify whether we want to use foam and it is worth remembering that this option applies not only to the form from the water decals but also to regular form. If we want to control our water direction and wave height with water decals, below we have the options to enable additional settings, which we activate in the project settings, graphics, and then click enable in the mask and current water decals. Then in the simulation tab, water mask and current map will disappear, but we will be able to add them as water decals using the properly prepared material. The advantage of this solution is that we don't need all water area that we want to control on one texture, but we can add appropriate texture to additional decals that we place on the scene. So if we want to use water mask, we check simulation mask. If we want to control our foam with our decals as well, we check simulation foam mask. And if we want to control the current map, we check large current. Of course, for each option we can also control the resolution. In a moment we will prepare a simple shader that we can use, but first let's explain the water decals options. To add a water decal to the scene, right click in the hierarchy window, then select water, water decals. A new object will be created and if we click on it, several options will appear. The first is scale mode, where we define how the object scales. If we choose scale invariant, the objects scale using the settings below, where we can increase or decrease its size. If we choose inherit from hierarchy, then we can also scale the object using the scale in the transform window. Next, we have the material field, where we can assign the material that will affect our water. And it is this material that will influence the behavior of our water where the decals is located. With resolution, we can determine the resolution of our decals, and below we can choose how often the decals refresh its influence on the water. Another option is amplitude, which defines the deformation of our water. Thanks to this, we can rise or lower the water level within the bounds of our decals. Next we have sliders, surface foam dimmer and deep foam dimmer that allow us to control the amount of surface and deep foam in our decals. It is worth mention that the standard water decals material by default allows controlling only those three parameters, amplitude, surface foam and deep foam. But we also want to have simulation mask and large current map in the material to control our water in this area. That is why first let's click on the shader used in our material, then using the shortcut Ctrl C copy it and paste it with Ctrl V into any folder. Now let's rename it and double click on it. The shader graph will open and first let's go to the graph inspector and the graph settings tab. Here we can choose which element we want in our shader, so let's check simulation mask and large current. As we will notice, new options will appear in the fragment section. Since we want to use texture to control the water, let's add them to the shader. To do this, right click in the middle and choose create node. 
Then select Sample Texture 2D. Use the shortcut Ctrl D to duplicate this node because we will use two different texture. Next, let's click the plus icon and select Texture 2D. Let's name the first one Water Mask. Duplicate it by Ctrl D and the second Current Map. Then drag them to the middle and connect. Water mask to the first sample texture and the current map to the second. As we remember, in the water mask texture the red channel corresponds to the big waves, so let's connect it to the simulation foam mask so that it generates the foam for us. From this same texture we also want to extract the RGB channel which corresponds to the waves. To do that let's add a new node Swizzle and it used to get component from vectors, in our case color channels, and then allows mixing, duplicating or rearranging them. Now we need to specify which channel we want to include. The red channel is vector X, green is Y, blue is Z and alpha is W. That's why in the mask field we will write X, Y, Z because the simulation mask requires exactly those three vectors. Next, move to the second texture and here, just like before, add a swizzle node and connect RGB to in and out to large current. This time we only need red and green channel, so in the mask field write X, Y. Now let's add a option so we can control how strongly green and red channel influence our water. First click the plus icon and add float, then rename it to influence, select it and in the graph inspector in the node settings set mood to slider. This way in the material we will have a slider instead of just a value field. Next, add a new multiply node and connect it to the blue channel. This channel contains information about how strongly the red and green channel influence the water direction in a given spot. Then drag or float and connect it to the multiply. The last thing left is connect multiply to the large current influence and now we can click the floppy disk icon to save our shader. Let's go back to our scene and create a new material that will use our shader. To do this, right click in the project window, then select create material. And in the shader field, choose shader graph and your shader. Now let's drag our material into material slot in the water decals. And when we expand this material, we can now easily add texture to it and control the influence of the current map on our water. Of course, we can create many such materials depending on how many water decals we want to use. The last thing we will cover is the water excluder, a component that removes the fragment of the water from the rendering image. It's work like a mask, cutting out part of the water surface in the area where the excluder mesh is located. To add a excluder to the scene, right click in the hierarchy window, water, excluder. Now when we click on this object, in the inspector window we can assign a mesh. Everywhere the mesh cover the water surface, the water won't be visible. Unfortunately, at the time of making this tutorial, this tool isn't very advanced, because it doesn't actually cut out the water but only doesn't display it in the excluder area. So, for example, if the camera ends up below the water surface, we're using the underwater effect, that effect will be still visible. This might change in the future, but right now, if we are making something like an underwater base where we go from above water to inside, we have to use various tricks like overlapping water surface and script that disable the underwater effect. However, in the situation when the camera can't go below water, excluder can be useful. And that's everything in this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. And if so, don't forget to leave the thumbs up and subscribe the channel, because in the next tutorial in this series we will cover adding shore waves. And until next time, see ya!